Hello everyone, welcome back to Asha.academy. Let me walk you through Ivan's tries and O level, which is lesson from class 12 CBSC. This lesson was written by Norman Colin Dexter. One liner of this lesson. This is a captivating prison break tale in which James Roderick Evans, who's a congenital kleptomaniac, a young criminal manipulates a situation to get away from the lockup. Here, James Roderick Evans was the protagonist who's termed as congenital kleptomania. Congenital, which means that by birth, and kleptomaniac, which means that he had the urge or desire to steal things. So he was termed to be congenital kleptomaniac and he manipulated a situation to escape from the prison. Manipulated, he fabricated a situation. So here dramatis personae, the characters, the characters of this lesson are the secretary of the examinations board, the governor of HM prison, Oxford, James Evans, a prisoner who's the protagonist. Mr. Jackson, a prison officer. Mr. Stephens, a prison officer. The Reverend Stuart McLeary, an invigilator. Mr. Carter, detective superintendent. Mr. Bell, detective chief inspector. Evans. When we talk about Evans, Evans was a kleptomaniac. He had a long wavy hair and he was conferred the title Evans the break why because he tried to escape from the prison thrice and that's the reason why he received the title evens the break and he wanted to qualify for the o level german examination though he was put up there in oxford prison o level which means that beginners level so he was given night coaching classes every night german teacher visited him regularly governor when we talk about governor governor was a fussy sort of person he appointed a teacher from technical college for even so that he could take up uh, o level german examination here he was apprehensive governor was really very apprehensive which means that he was very doubtful here why because in the pretext of taking examination events may escape the prison cell that's what his idea was governor was duty conscious and that's the reason why he installed why he set the microphone uh, in the cell of evans governor knew little german and that is how he decoded evans message finally that is at the end of the lesson he instructed officers to guide evans he was credulous, credulous here, which means that he believed everyone immediately. He trusted officers. He even trusted injured McLeary to accompany Carter so that he could help Carter to trace out events. Even in the final act, you could see governor, how he allowed events to be carried in a prison van in front of us eyes mcleary mcleary he here he was a person at saint Ma uh, mary max who was sent to oxford prison he was supposed to act as a proctor proctor which means that invigilator actually he went to oxford prison to to be an invigilator for events o level uh, german examination he had a short choppy haircut and wore a clerical shirt and collar, glasses, and a black long coat. He was from Broad Street. McLeary was impersonated by one of Evans' friends. Children, you need to understand that the one who came to invigilate Evans was not a real McLeary at all. He was one of Evans' friends here. He was made hostage, that is real McLeary was made hostage by Evans' friends. And Jackson, Jackson here, he was a senior officer. He had a string of Second World War medals on his, decorated on his left side, chest, 
and he removed nail scissors and nail file from Ewan's cell there and he loathed Ewan's wavy hair, loathed which means that hated Ewan's wavy hair. But anyways, he allowed Ewan's to have wobble hat. He frisked MacLeary. He removed paper knife from MacLeary. On top of it, he insulted MacLeary for having semi-inflated rubber ring by asking him whether he was uh, for invigilation or for swimming class. Stephens. Stephens was a newly recruited uh, officer. He was a burly, surely looking man who was stout. Stephens guarded Evans' D cell. He peeped through the hole. Before that, he was causing disruption. He felt proud to escort MacLeary at the end, at the end of the examination. Summary. James Roderick Evans was a lawbreaker. He was put in Oxford prison for his uh, criminal uh, activities. He was under strict supervision as he escaped thrice from the prison. But anyways, he wanted to qualify for O-level German examination. So when he requested to governor, governor to accepted his request, conceded, which means that accepted. Governor wanted no repetition of his escape here. So governor, he wanted to retain Evans there in the prison. Evans was known for his cordiality, cordial, which means that friendliness evans was known for his friendliness a pleasant sort of chap he was known for his sweet activities or sweet attitude here and he was one of the stars at the christmas concert he imitated mike yawood who was uh, who was a comedian mike yawood is an english impressionist and comedian he was one of britain's top rated entertainers regularly appearing on television from the mid 1960s to the late 1980s the secretary of the examination board agreed to hold the exam in the prison cell but he had to be incommunicado who had to be incommunicado Evans, the one who was about to take the examination had to remain silent without speaking up so he had to remain silent governor ensured unfailing exam strategy precautionary steps taken not to let events make the break again so severe stringent measures were taken uh, to retain events there inside the prison on 7 june 8 30 pm events teacher bid him goodbye while bidding him goodbye he uttered the phrase uh, good luck in German but Evans was not able to understand anything uh, of that particular phrase so teacher asserted that he didn't even stand a chance to get through the examination he didn't have any chance of passing the examination that's what the teacher asserted Morning activities on 8 June 8 30 a.m. Jackson and Stephens, two prison officials, checked Evans' room. Nothing could be found from the room or in the room. Evans was given half an hour to smarten himself. Actually, he cut his hair to impersonate the invigilator, MacLeary. So here, uh, this man, that is Evans, was known to have long and wavy hair, but with the help of the razor, he cut his hair so that he could impersonate the invigilator. But later on, the razor was taken away, but a bobble hat was allowed to be retained, without which he could not have hidden his chopped hair. At 845, a person named MacLeary entered the prisoner's cell as invigilator. He carried a small brown suitcase. So this invigilator was not at all a real one. It was a fake invigilator. So there in the small brown suitcase, he had a sealed question paper envelope, a yellow invigilation form, a special authentication card from the examination board, a paper knife, a Bible, and a current copy of the Church Times, that is the newspaper. 
Actually, inflated ring contained pig's blood. It was used to pretend that invigilator was hurt to deceive the officers. Real McLeary was bound and gagged in his flat. Jackson frisked Evans' clothes. Listening device was installed. Governor wanted to listen to each sound in the prisoner's cell. Strict vigilance was done by Jackson and Stephens. During the examination, actually it was for two hours, the examination was meant to be, meant to be happen for two hours. It was scheduled to start at 9.15 a.m. At 9.10, governor switched on the listening device. McLeary instructed Evans to fill in the answer sheet with index number 313 and center number 271. Children, you need to understand with these clues, that is index number and center number, the governor was able to decode Evans' message, which was left there in the question paper. Evans didn't want Stephens in examination cell, so governor, through Jackson, informed him to be out of the cell. Actually, the examination had to start at 9.15, but for some reason, that is because of um, Stephen's present there, presence there, it took some time to start. So about nearly about 9.25, it started. At 9.40, assistant secretary rang and asked to make some correction in question paper. Words like Zoom Golden and Lowen in place of Zoom Golden Lowen. And then the magistrate's court, they needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers remand case. And soon after the very first call at 9.40, again, the governor received another call. That is from the magistrate's court. And this was the hook's call. Even friends made use of this vehicle at the end. Children, you need to be very careful about these details. Stephens frequently peeped through the hole. McLeary reading the newspaper with his hand holding the back of the collar. At 10.51 a.m., Stephens noticed a blanket draped around Evans' shoulder. Three minutes before examination, Stephens received a call. Actually, it was not from the governor at all. Again, it was a hoax call. At 11.25, exam got over. And now this is the battle of wits between Evans and the officers. McCleary was escorted by Stephens. His accent seemed broader and he seemed slimmer in long overcoat. And Stephens wanted to give a last look at Evans. And then he was shocked by looking at the man. That man was sprawled back in Ewan's chair. Blood was oozing and McLeary was suspected to be hit. McLeary showed a photocopied sheet superimposed over the last page of the question paper. Ewan's had been instructed how to start action three minutes before the final moment of the exam. So now, Detective Superintendent Carter entered. McLeary accompanied Carter in his van towards Ellsfield. Evans was suspected to have gone there. And meanwhile, the governor thought Jackson confidently reported him the previous night. Nothing was found there in his room. Yet Evans had somehow managed to conceal, conceal which means that hide, not only a false beard, a pair of spectacles, a dog collar, and all the rest of his clerical paraphernalia, but also some sort of weapon with which he had given MacLeary such a terrible blow across the head. Ah, okay. So here you need to understand false beard while getting out of the place that is prison gate. He had false beard 
and he had specs, a dog collar, and all the other stuff which a, a pastor must have. And now Newberry from the question paper, he decodes the word Nurabben. What it could be Newberry? Governor understood Evans was going to Newberry now. So this information was sent to Inspector Bell. Carter informed him that McLeary had spotted Evans driving off along Elsfield Way. They had got the number of the car all right and had given the chase immediately but had lost him at the Headington roundabout. But that was proved wrong by the governor because governor told that McLeary was not in Radcliffe Hospital at all. Children, you need to be very careful. Why? Because you know here in this part, injured McLeary spoke slowly and in broken phrases that he knew where Evans was. He asked the prison officers to get the police and not to worry about the ambulance. He found the German question paper on the table he told Jackson to get the governor. He drew the attention of the governor to the German text on photocopied sheet on the last page. The governor slowly translated it. The words from Elsfield Way Drive to the Headington Roundabout caught his attention. The examination board was in Elsfield Way. Meanwhile, the police arrived. Before the governor could explain anything, McLeary told the officer to go Elsfield Way. The governor told Detective Superintendent Carter to take the injured McLeary with him. McLeary was helped inside the car. He helped the police to follow the direction indicated in the German text. But later on, governor got to know that he wasn't there in Radcliffe Hospital at all. He got nearby, uh, he got down nearby the examination board office and from there he fled the place. Quite an hour later, Reverend Stuart McLeary securely bound and gagged. He was found by the police officers. By tea time, everyone knew it was not even impersonating McLeary had walked out, but it was Evans impersonating McLeary had stayed in. I do believe, children, you must have understood this particular scene. And then thereafter, Evans had delicious food to his heart's content. He had fish and chips and he landed himself there uh, at the Golden Lion Hotel which is located in Chipping Norton, then he thought how the process was quite lengthy and tricky. That is how with the help of a razor blade, he had to chop his lengthy wavy hair. And not only that, he was allergic to sticking plaster. And he asked for an early morning call at 6.45 a.m. from the receptionist as he was there in that particular hotel, that is the Golden Lion. Even now, he was startled to see Governor, shocked to see Governor because he was sitting in his narrow bed. The Governor warned him not to try to escape. Governor disclosed, revealed how he had reached there with the help of correction slip which had exposed him and not only that the clues like index number 313 and center number 271 when he put it together he got the place called middle of Chipping Norton, middle of Chipping Norton uh, with the help of an ordnance survey map for Oxfordshire he found out this particular place and that is how he traced events that he would be there at the hotel called the golden lion there were many golden lion hotels but this particular hotel just because of the index number and center number and now zoom golden and low and meant the golden lion hotel governor wondered about the availability of blood events told it was pig's blood 
and the teacher was his associate so he was one of his friends who entered or who visited Evans regularly to teach him German. Van arrived to take away Evans and he was handcuffed. Again, children, you need to be very careful who could be uh, the officer to handcuff him. Governor bid farewell to Evans. This gullible, this uh, governor who is uh, credulous, he believed everyone every time or at any time. Then it was unlocked by prison officer. As you do know that this prison officer is one of his friends, one of Ivan's friends. Drivers directed to head towards Newbury. Ivan's escaped again with his men in his jeep in front of the governor, the gullible governor. So Ivan's shook the entire police personnel. Uh, with his ingenuity and wisdom ingenuity which means that his cleverness his uh, skillfulness the way he planned to escape for the fourth time with his friends earned everyone's admiration for his sharpness and cleverness thank you children thanks for listening to me patiently please do like share and subscribe Bye bye